Hey Moticon, welcome at our session. My name is Leen Penders, I'm Chief Marketing at RobSolid and I've been working uh, with different marketing automation platforms and with many clients over the past 15 years. And I've seen many starting really enthusiastic uh, on marketing automation projects, but still ending up failing um, because they didn't have a really good strategy um, to start with. So that's what our session is about today. Hi. I'm Els. Um, I'm in charge together with Lean of the internal marketing of DropSolid. I have been working with marketing automation platforms, um, but at DropSolid it's the first time that I've been working with Mautic. Um, I think everybody who's listening probably um, is familiar with the concept of marketing automation. Um, and for me, the biggest misconception um, is that it seems effortless or it seems like when you're doing marketing automation, everything just goes as you please. Um, and that's not true. You have to put a lot of effort in it to make it good and to make it um, get the results that you really want. And today we will share our six most important tips or best practices, um, some lessons that we've learned along the way um, so that you can learn from our mistakes. Um, you can see our pitfalls and you can see um, or you can start with the right mindset to make marketing automation a success from the start. Our first tip, don't consider journeys as funnels. Else, what do we mean with that? Well, um, your visitors, they don't all go through the same funnel to reach a goal. Um, they don't do what you expect them to do. They uh, are distracted, they drop out, they go somewhere else um, or they change routes. So um, the funnel you had in mind for them, it's rarely completed. So that's why a customer journey is a continuous process. It's not an endless funnel. Um, so you can't push them through the funnel that you had in mind for them. Um, this is of course just a theory, um, but Lien, can you give us some tips how you can actually make um, a process instead of an endless funnel? Yeah, um, there's many things uh, about this, but I think I have three specific tips in mind. The first one is think cross-channel. Um, email might be the channel that you're using a lot and that you're, um, that you're used to using, but people don't only come to you via the emails that you send them. Um, they also come via other ways. They search on Google, they go to your website directly. So the first thing is make sure that whenever they come to you via, regardless of which channel, that they see a consistent brand story, that you tell the same story over the different channels. And also think about what channel might be the best for each specific message. For example, a message that requires a direct action can be better via SMS or even WhatsApp. Um, and also try to think about the channels that your users typically use. Um, the second tip um, is use lead scoring. Um, lead scoring gives you the means of somehow still detecting the stage of the buyer funnel that they're in, um, because the more they engage, the higher their lead scoring gets. Um, and that can also be a, a way to, based on their lead score, give them different uh, content um, again on all your channels yeah. and if you can combine that lead score their engagement score more or less with their interest that's when you can really give them a personalized message so for example at the case of drop solid if we detect that someone's interesting in reading Drupal content on our website or reading Mautic content and we see that both of them are getting a higher lead score, getting more engaged than the one person we give a Drupal message and the other one we give a Mautic message. So it's always a combination of lead scoring and interest. If you can do that, then you can get really personal. And my third tip is try to recycle content. If you try for each possible contact point, get new messages and find out new content, it's a huge amount of work. So don't try to do that. You, you will never succeed. Try to recycle content in different formats um, over different channels so that you bring the same message in a video, in an email, on your website, in a blog post, so that you recycle content. It also brings a consistent story and it eases a bit the, the load on the marketing team to keep on um, finding out new content. All right, interesting. So, um, how are we doing that in Mautic? I'll show you. 
I'll quickly show you how to do lead scoring in Modic. If you are familiar with the platform, you know you can go to, go to contact, select the contact. I will take mine for this example, and you can see that I have 879 points. Well, that's quite a lot, but how did I get these points? Well, on a website, you can put triggers on things that a person does and make them collect points. For example, um, I can download a white paper or I can put a product into my basket. I can stay on a page for a certain amount of time, for example, a price page, which is which is quite important. And all the things that I am doing make, make sure that I'm collecting points. Now, I have 879 points. That's a lot, but it would be pointless not to do anything with it. So that's where marketing automation comes in. And with Motic, you can send out triggers to people who have gained a certain amount of points. For example, if you have collected 200 points, you can send out an email. If you are selling a product, for example, you can send out an email with a coupon code of 20% off. Or um, if you have a service for Drop Solid, for example, if a person has 150 or 300, depending on what you're choosing, you can send an email to um, your sales team with a, this person has 200 points. Maybe you can check if the quality of this lead is good or you can contact him via email or telephone um, to check if they are interested in the service that we're offering. So this way, it's a whole other level than going from a funnel from step one, two, three, four, and then sending out an automated email. You just, your customer does a lot of things on your website. They collect points. If they have a certain amount of points, you can send them automated emails. So it's a whole different um, thing to do it this way. Lynn, our second tip is avoid email fatigue. What do we mean by that? Yeah. Email fatigue is about people getting tired of getting your emails. If you send them too many emails, they will stop reading, um, for sure if they're not really relevant for them. So the tip here, it's really simple. Try to send as little emails as possible to each person in your audience and always make them as relevant as possible. Very clear, very easy tip, but in, in reality, it's, it's not so easy. Um, because in our previous tip also, we said journeys are not linear. People can be in different journeys at more or less the same time based on, on, yeah, on, on their context. Um, as an example, if I had a bad brand experience, I bought a product, I had a complaint, it didn't work so well. And the next day I get your weekly promotion email. Yeah, that's, that's not a good user experience. Um, so, and besides that, it's also not just email. Um, people, if you do it right, are getting your retargeting ads, are seeing you across different um, outbound channels. So that makes it even more complex. Um, as a conclusion, be cautious not to send too many emails um, and because you will lose them and try to think when you define journeys and segments yeah, that people can, can be in different journeys at the same time. So try to think about that when, when, you're, defining, um, when you're defining the journeys. So um, what are your tips, Els? What can we do about email fatigue? Well, in Mautic, you have the option um, to add a limit to the number of emails you're sending out. Uh, so it's an option that you can say like, okay, I want a person to only receive one email a week or one email a day, uh, depending on the frequency that you want to send out emails. Um, so that's one. And be aware that you prioritize. Of course, there are emails that are more important than other emails. So make sure you have a list of priorities and make sure they're sent out and the rest will follow later. Or think about, are they really necessary? Do you really have to send them? Um, and the frequency cap is also something that you can do uh, cross channel, for example, um, if you're doing Facebook ads or LinkedIn ads, you can add a frequency cap that people don't, you don't overkill them with the same ad over and over again. Um, so the frequency is one thing that's really important. Um, second thing is think about possible overlaps. For example, um, on the Drop Solid website, you can download a couple of white papers. And if you download a white paper, you're put into a nurturing flow. Um, it happens a lot actually that people download not one but maybe two or three or four downloads or f four, <laughs> four white papers at the same time because they're interested, they're seeing your content. And what happens, they receive the nurturing email flow of all four white papers. Um, and that might be an overkill to receive that many uh, emails from the same company over again. So 
Um, you can in Mautic say, okay, receive this email and don't receive all the other email or nurturing flows that you can just focus on one. And if they end that, you can make a decision to make a follow-up campaign or something, but don't send them all at the same time. Um, and the last one is planning is key. If you are doing a lot of email campaigns, make sure to have a plan in mind, to have an overview of what emails are going out um, so you can see the pain points, um, the email flows that are overlapping. Um, so make sure you have a plan in mind before you start sending all the emails that you have. Um, I can also show you in Mautic um, how we can do some of those things. I'll quickly show you how to put a frequency cap in. You go to settings to configuration. It takes a while, but on the left side, you have uh, email settings and here you can put a gap. Um, it's a standard frequency that don't send me any emails more than every three days or every three weeks. You can just put it in as you please. Then another thing we did is if you go to campaigns, and then uh, I put in a nurturing flow example, um, just to make sure I don't do anything wrong. Um, and here you can see, this is a download form. Um, first of all, of course, check the language. And the second condition is that you are not put into an other um, segment that is sending out nurturing flows. So for example, we have another nurturing flow here um, about our business agency. So if you are in this segment, you know, the flow won't start. Of course, if you are not in this segment, the nurturing flow of this download white paper will, of course, start. So that's quickly how you can do this. Tip number three, make it personal, else explain. Yes, when you're designing digital experience, you always have to keep your end user in mind. That's the person you're doing it for, so you have to put him in the center of the journey you're designing. Um, how can you do this? Well, you can ask yourself a couple of questions like, um, what does he need? What do you expect him to do? What is he looking for? Um, so with those questions in mind, you can answer them by making it very personal. And Customers nowadays, they expect it to be personal. They expect you to give them a journey that's focused on him with relevant content. Um, you can address them by their name. You have a lot of data about the, the person that is on your website probably, so use it. Um, and with the data that you have, that you have probably stored somewhere uh, back um, in the platform that you're using, um, use the insights that you have. And this way you can really turn the experience of this person in a very personal journey. Um, and when I'm telling it to you, it sounds like, oh yeah, that's easy. But um, there are a lot of pitfalls. Um, can you tell us a bit more about the pitfalls, Lynn? Yeah, I think I have two practical tips here um, from my own experience, also at Drop Solid. The first one is um, don't spend your money on uh, buying lists. Um, we tried it a few times. For us, it didn't work at all. Um, the quality was poor and it, it cost us a lot of money. It might work in, in, in some specific um, industries perhaps, but for us it didn't work. Um, the second thing I've learned also here at Drop Solid is it, find the balance between personalization and automation. Um, the more you try to personalize, the harder it, it gets, the more messy your, your setup gets, uh, your content plan gets. So um, finding the balance there, it's challenging, but a few tips I have there is, the, is about um, try to make your audiences for personalizations as big as possible. Try to limit it to four, that's, that's what we do and that's still manageable. But try to think of pivot questions. A simple example is uh, of a pivot question is, do you have kids or not? Um, of course, for Drop Solid, it doesn't matter, but you get the point. That gives you two audiences that have really different needs, different interests, different things they're looking for. And that can be a good basis of personalizing for one or the other. Um, that's still fairly simple. So try to think of those type of questions to divide your audience in as large as possible groups that you have a really interesting different message for um, and start there. Okay, um, I will show in Mautic how we can do this. Voilà. 
So we've told you that the personalization is key and that it's very important. I'll quickly show you how you can do this in Mautic. You go back to contacts. I'll pick my contact again. Um, and you can see a lot on this page, but one piece that I want to show you here is this tab, details. So you know my name, my last name, my email address, I'm from Belgium, I speak Dutch, um, all the information that you need. But one piece of information that's particularly important for us is this one, um, the personalized segment. So you can see I am in the marketing segment right here, which is um, great because I'm a marketeer, that's right. Um, but the most important thing is what we do with this. So if I'm on the Drop Solid website, it's also personalized. Um, if I surf on the website and they know I'm in the marketing segment, they show me content that's relevant, relevant to my profile. Instead of showing me like featured blog post, it can be a tech, it can be a business, it can be a marketing um, blog post, but they know I'm in the marketing segment. This all three of those content pieces will be about marketing, which makes the experience for my profile very interesting. I'm not distracted by content that I'm probably not interested about. So that's how you can do it on the website. And of course, you can all also do it on your emails. I will take you to our campaigns. Um, this is a newsletter that we send out in May and I will take you to how we set up the campaign. So we have a lot of different segments. We have tech, applicant performance. Um, so you can see them all here. What we do with this campaign is if we, we check in which segment that you are and depending on the segment, you get a different email. Um, now, what is personalized? You have a different subject line. You have a different order of the pieces of information. There's also, there are pieces of information that are in or not in your newsletter. And um, we have a different introduction and we have a different person um, that is sending the emails. So it can be our CEO or our CTO, depending on in which segment that you are. I'll quickly show you here. So this is one that's for our business segment. So it's just um, an introduction. It's from our CEO. And then you have an article about a uh, client of ours and about uh, Frederik, who is our enterprise architect. I'll show you one that's going to our clients. Um, it has a different introduction. It's from Tom. He's working at the um, performance team. So he is in contact with our clients. So they know Tom. And then there are two different pieces of information or uh, blog posts are Google Analytics for. So it's something that our clients are very interested about or they should know and another case that we are presenting. So you can see that difference between one or the other. Um, it's relevant to your profile and it's what you're interested in. So your experience as a customer is way better than if it's all general. Um, tip number four is start simple and build for growth. Lean, how do we start simple but keep our future growth in mind? Yeah, um, start simple is really key here. Um, you should not go all over the place when you start with automation, but you should think of one simple campaign to start with. It can be different um, for each uh, company. Um, you can, for example, start if you already have a newsletter to bring that into Motic, bring your list into Motic and start sending recurring newsletters. Um, if you don't have a big audience yet, you can start with only putting all the forms on your website where you capture opt-ins and, and where you capture uh, lead gen forms actually. Bring those into Motic, send a small follow-up email, maybe do a little bit of nurturing. That can also be a starting point and then you only start doing newsletters and more automation afterwards. Um, so yeah, think of what is the most important or what is the low hanging fruit for you to, um, to start with and do small experiments. Also don't try to automate everything at once, but go step by step. If you don't really know what works, sometimes A-B tests can, um, can also work very well. Um, and I think also we learned um, this from experience. Yes. Um... We did some uh, Facebook advertisements um, and we started very small. We did a very little test uh, of a very small audience. And before setting up all the automations, before putting the leads into Motic, um, we did it manually. So we did have a flow, 
Um, but if you notice that this flow doesn't work and you did put all the automations into place and you put a lot of effort into uh, the flows in Motic, um, then you had a lot of effort and you didn't have any results. So what we did is a little test. You do it manually if you see it works. Then you can set up the automations, spend some more budget on it, capture more leads and have the uh, flow purely automated. Yeah. So that's the thing we did. Yeah, indeed. And then when you know it works and you've spent the time in automating it um, and getting it out of your hands, um, no longer doing it manual, a next step can also be that um, when you're automating more and more, you should also do it wisely. Um, when one lead nurturing campaign works, you can start copying it over and over for other lead gen flows, but there are also ways when you're at that point of your growth to do it smarter and to keep the maintenance also of all those campaigns um, a bit simpler. And that's also, I think we also learned some lessons there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did. We had, um, I think, 11 webinars uh, for a couple of, in a couple of months, uh, we all did them. and. We copied them. We did one flow, we copied it. So we had 11 flows um, and it would have been better and we've learned from it, but it would have been better if we had one generic flow and put everything in this and use dynamic fields. For example, for our, our um, downloads of the white papers, we have one generic download, download form and we just um, do the personalization from the other white paper. So you have a personal email, but it's just one form. Um, and it would have been better if we did it that way. So there are solutions to do it simpler. <laughs> <laughs> so start simple and build for growth. How do we do this in Motic? Well, I'll show you. If you go to components um, and to forms, you can see I've already filtered on resources and you can see here that we have one generic resource download in English and one in Dutch. If we go to this field, you can see all the fields are the same for this, which means that if a person downloads a white paper of Drop Solid or downloads an ebook or downloads another resource, um, they use one form. We don't have different forms for all the different uh, downloadables that are on our website. Now you might imagine, okay, and do they all get the same generic email? No. And that's the thing where it gets interesting. If they download a form, you can see it here. They are put into a, a campaign, which we divide them into segments, but we also here have sent download link. So if you download a white paper, of course, it's very logical that you get also sent um, the white paper by email so that you can find it again in your mailbox. Now, still here, you can only see one email and then we turn to our emails. I filtered on generic. This is just one email in Dutch, but it has translations. Of course, I will show you the English one. This one, um, let me see if I can show it here. Yes, so this is an email they receive. You see a lost requested resource type uh, title. Um, so this is a standard email, but it's personalized. How do we do this? It's better to show you in Motic itself. So we go to the builder and you see here that we're working with dynamic fields. So if you want to start simple and build for growth, it's very easy to just have one uh, download form, one email, but you have the dynamic fields in Motic, which you can just say, okay, this title is the resource title. So here, will say white paper about personalization. Hi, Els, thank you for requesting a copy of a drop solid white paper about personalization. You can find it here. And again, uh, the button to link it to the white paper itself, which is way easier than having, if you have 10 white papers, 10 different forms, 10 different emails. If you want to change this, just one simple thing, then you have to change all the emails. Well, this is way faster if you can just change it into one email. Tip number five, done, it's never done. Right, Els? Yeah, that's true. And that's also what I said in my introduction. Um, some people have the misconception that marketing automation is effortless. Um, but the key here is understanding that marketing doesn't do marketing for you. It can help you scale your successful efforts, but um, it's a, not a once and done job. You have to keep learning and have to keep improving. Um, but it's also not a game to keep inventing new campaigns and new emails. And that's what we uh, talked about in the email fatigue. Um, so you don't have to overload it. Um, 
but it's more about making your emails and your flows better and uh, more personal and more scalable. Um, so you should start small and aim high. Um, you can automate a lot, but things change and you have new campaigns. So you have to put in effort to make it better and keep optimizing. Yeah, um, I have a few tips here. Um, also, very simple tips, but still very important to keep in mind. One is um, discover pain points to drive improvements. So don't just send your emails, launch your campaigns and, and <laughs> have it running, um, but always reflect back um, and, and check the results of your campaigns. Uh, where do people drop off? What is wrong? Maybe a button is not working or maybe they don't understand the copy in your email. So you can detect from, from the data that people are dropping off or, your, or some campaigns are not working as you expected them to, to work um, and improve that. That's, that's something that you just need to keep doing um, at any point in time. And besides that, it is important to invest in a good framework um, so that your basics is right, that your data model is right, that, that your segmentation, that the basic foundation is really good to keep you, um, to keep you growing. Um, and when you are prioritizing and thinking about doing new campaigns, make sure that you always reflect back to that strategy, to that why are we doing this, what are we trying to, to accomplish here, instead of just inventing new ideas and, and, and building new campaigns. Um, at Dropsolid, we've created a marketing automation strategy framework. Um, one of our colleagues, Ton, is also um, demonstrating how that framework works in, a, in another session here at Mauticon, I think tomorrow. Yep. Um, so if you're interested in, in, in this type of um, um, tips and best practices, then that might be a good session uh, for you to join. And yes. I think you also have one more tip to share in Mautic. Yes, um, I will take you there. So we've talked a lot about uh, personalization and putting your customer into the center, into the middle of all of it. But one thing we didn't talk about is how you know what your customer likes. And one thing that Lean already explained is that you can do testing. So a B test to check which version of a newsletter or which copy works better. And the second one is, of course, dive into your analytics. And that's something I want to show you today in, in Modic. You probably have all seen it, but I just want to focus on three things that we've learned from this email, a newsletter that we send out in the beginning of the year. So the first thing is here in Motic, you can see uh, on what device your customers are reading your emails. And so we were quite shocked that a lot of our customers read their content on a smartphone and we've designed our emails on a desktop version. So it was a very important takeaway for us to also make sure it's very mobile friendly because a lot of people check it on their mobile. Then a second thing I want to show you is you can see here the big spike, of course, on the 29th of January, because that's the day we've sent it out. And then you have two days of less reading. And suddenly on February 1st, there's another little spike. And we were wondering what happened. Why didn't they read it here? Um, so we've checked the dates and January 29th is a Friday. So you have two days of weekend. And on Monday, the inbox opened again uh, and they read it um, on February 1st. So a takeaway that we can learn here is that you just don't send emails on a Friday because people will they will get lost in their inbox and some people will read it on Monday but it's probably better to send it out during midweek and the third one I want to show you is clicks so Mautic also gives you an overview of all the clicks that you've generated and you can see here this was an article that scored quite good the second one also and then you have two articles with little results like no clicks so we know now um, that those articles are less interesting for the people reading our emails and that's also something you can learn from um, analyze your emails check what the results are and make sure the next email is better and is more personalized to your audience Tip number six is to infinity and beyond, and it might sound familiar because it's from Toy Story, but Lean, how do we um, make this about marketing automation? Yes, 
Marketing automation is our toy, our favorite <laughs> one. Uh, no, it, it might sound a bit contradictory to the previous tips about starting small and not overdoing it. Um, however, what we mean here is different. Um, what we mean here is that your identified marketing database is about 0.1% of your entire potential audience. Um, so it means don't spend all your efforts on these guys um, while there's still 99.9% .9 out there. So it's about not getting tunnel vision and only spending your marketing efforts here on, on the people already in your database, but balance your marketing efforts between automation and other marketing techniques to get more leads um, in your database. The exact balance depends a bit on, on your strategic goals. Some companies are working much more on getting more leads in, while others spend their efforts in getting more intimate with their customers, improving their customer experience. So the balance might be different, but for everyone, there is a balance between automating and people in your database and the rest out there. Um, also for Drop Solid, we have a few tips here. Yes, um, at the moment we are um looking into our database and we found a way um, or we are looking for a way um, to import our customer customer data into uh, Facebook and to custom audiences because we know the people we have in, in Mautic in our database they are um, they like our products they are interested um, so we can retarget them but we can also make lookalike audiences from them so we know they are they are of a high quality and if we um, have Facebook make lookalikes of this audience, then we know they are also interested and it's an entire new audience's audience. So that's what we're testing right now and um, we're looking forward to seeing the results. Yeah, indeed. And there's some other things we're doing also there at Solid, but I have an other session tomorrow here at Mauticon where I will be explaining a lot more about how Mautic uh, or marketing automation can fit in your omni-channel customer journeys and in your entire um, customer journeys. So if you're interested in learning more about that, tune in tomorrow um, in my other session. We are at the end of our session. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you have some tips that you can use in real life. Um, if you have some questions, shoot, we're here. All right. So here we are. Hey there, Hi. folks. How are you doing? Wonderful talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, some of those tips were really, really helpful. I especially like the one where you were saying about starting things easy and then kind of growing as you grow. Um, I wondered if you could share which out of the tips you've just shared with us are your favorites. What are the ones that you think are the most helpful for attendees? Um, if, if I can start, my favorite one is actually the one you were also referring to, Ruth. Um, just starting simple, but with one condition, keep your end goal in mind. So um, keep it simple from the start, but make sure that you start from the right strategy um, so that you don't lose yourself on the way if you're making things more, uh, if you're going to the next steps. Um, and by the way, one of our colleagues, Tom, has a session on marketing automation strategy uh, later today, I think. And he's also sharing some more tips in the on that. So starting with a good strategy, um, for me, it's it's been really key, really important. How about you, else? Yeah, for me, it's um, also that tip, of course. Uh, but uh, done, it's never done is also one that's very important for me. Because um, if you don't optimize your emails, they just keep running. Um, and you don't know what's happening with them. Um, so to keep it relevant, to make it personal, um, just keep watching it and keep optimizing the emails that you're sending out. Great. And what do you think is the tip that has the potential to be like the biggest, as we say, like bang for the buck for someone who's new to marketing automation and they're maybe just starting out, so they're maybe just sending emails? Um, what do you think is likely to be the most powerful thing they can take on at that stage? Um, I think, again, it's it's a bit the same thing. Don't just send an email and, and stop. Um, look into your campaign, see how it's going, um, look into the, the details, the reporting, and, uh, and always see what you can improve. Because, yeah, there's always something that can be better. Yeah, and also start 
small the the one that uh, you also said Ruth um start with one email and see how that's going and then make it bigger and better um yeah don't make too many assumptions up front just do it and see the data and learn from that yeah, I think that's a mistake I've seen people fall into when they, they start using Mautic and they're like, wow, I have this shiny new tool and they try to use everything all at once without much strategy. And like you say, without saying, let's try this and then learn and then let's try this and then learn. And they just end up in a bit of a muddle because they're not quite sure what's working and they're not quite sure like where to take their customers through that journey. So yeah, I feel like that's really, really good advice. Someone asked in the room about the earlier tips. If you missed those tips, we'll be sharing all the videos from Morticon on uh, YouTube later. Um, but I'm sure they can also connect with Els and Lean in the networking area afterwards if you want to follow up. Is that right? Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. OK, let me just check and see if there's any further questions. Not a question, but I found this really valuable. Thank you. Awesome. That's great feedback. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything else you would like to say just in closing, folks? Um, thank you for having us. Thank you for joining our session. Enjoy the rest of Modicon. Um, yeah. And I hope to, uh, to be able to connect you know, and learn a lot as well in the coming two days. Great. So you'll both be in the networking area directly afterwards. You also have a booth at the event, I understand. So people can drop in and have a look at the Drop Solid booth at any point during the event as well, can't they? Yeah, sure. Indeed. Awesome. All right. Thanks very much for your time, folks. And hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay. Bye.